In this video, we'll take a look at what brain tumors are. We'll also look at some of the types of brain tumors along with their symptoms and how they're being treated with radiation and chemotherapy and how the side effects of radiation and chemotherapy are being reduced with medical cannabis. We'll also go over some of the basics of the endocannabinoid system, showing how medical cannabis works to reduce radiation side effects and chemotherapy side effects. And also we'll hear from Dr. Sanjay Gupta from CNN talk about how he changed his mind about medical marijuana. And this came especially after researching its efficacy on refractory brain seizures in children. Everybody, welcome back. In the last video, we got a lot of views about cannabis and the brain. So I thought in this video, we would continue that and speak about medical marijuana and brain tumor treatment, especially because this is a promising combination that can help out quite a few people. So first off, what are brain tumors? So brain tumors are growths or masses of abnormal brain cells, which can significantly affect the nervous system's function. And currently, there is no known cure for brain tumors, but conventional treatment methods such as radiation and chemotherapy are widely used. However, these treatments can cause debilitating side effects. Medical marijuana is stepping up to offer patients some relief from these side effects by combining with conventional treatments. All right, so first let's get some understanding about brain tumors. So first off, they vary in growth rate and effect on the nervous system's function depending on their development and location. Researchers have identified some known risk factors, including head radiation, Lee-Fromeni syndrome, neurofibromatosis, fibromatosis, and rare genetic conditions. However, these cases account for only a small percentage of the 78,980 new diagnosed brain tumors every year in the United States. So there's many different types of brain tumors, classified as either primary or secondary. So primary tumors begin in the brain, while secondary brain tumors, they start elsewhere in the body, and then they spread eventually to the brain. And brain tumors can be either benign or malignant, depending on whether or not they contain cancer cells and their tendency to spread. Now, common types of brain tumors include gliomas, acoustic neuromas, pituitary tumors, brain metastases, and pediatric brain tumors. And each type of these brain tumors has unique characteristics and growth patterns. All right, so let's just take a brief history of brain tumors. So evidence of tumors has been found in the Egyptian mummies and fossilized bones, suggesting that cancer is not a new disease. Throughout history, people have been noting cancer occurrences, with ancient surgical manuscripts reporting eight breast cancer cases, but stating that there is no treatment. Fortunately, tremendous progress has been made in cancer treatment in recent years, and many types of cancer now have a better prognosis. Now let's speak about some of the symptoms of brain tumors. So symptoms and signs of brain tumors, they depend on their location and their size and their growth rate. Symptoms can be specific or general. And some of the symptomatology associated with the brain tumors include headaches, difficulty with balance, unexplained vomiting or nausea, speech difficulties, vision problems, hearing problems, confusion, loss of sensation in a leg or arm, seizures, and changes in behavior or personality. All right, so now let's talk about what's being done about this, and this is where we're going to speak about combining medical marijuana with conventional treatments. So medical marijuana has become an increasingly popular option for patients with brain tumors. While medical marijuana cannot cure brain tumors, it can help alleviate some of the symptoms caused by conventional treatments such as radiation and chemotherapy. These symptoms can include nausea, vomiting, loss of appetite, and chronic pain. So medical marijuana can help manage symptoms due to its active compounds, cannabinoids, which interact with the body's endocannabinoid system. So what is the endogenous cannabinoid system? Cannabinoids are naturally occurring compounds found in the cannabis sativa plant. And the most well-known cannabinoids are THC and CBD, both of which are being studied for their effects on pain and other diseases. Cannabinoids interact with the body through the endogenous cannabinoid system, a cell signaling system that plays a role in regulating things such as sleep and mood and appetite, reproduction, stress, nerve function, inflammation, and pain. The endogenous cannabinoid system exists and is active in your body even if you don't use cannabis. At the cellular level, Endocannabinoids react with receptors found on the surface of cells, including nerve and immune cells. CB1 receptors are mostly found in the central nervous system. An endocannabinoid might bind to the CB1 receptor in a spinal nerve to relieve pain, for example. CB2 receptors are mostly found in the peripheral nervous system, especially immune cells. An endocannabinoid might bind to a CB2 receptor on an immune cell to target inflammation caused by an autoimmune disease. Now, when the body experiences pain or inflammation, enzymes are activated to produce endocannabinoids. The endocannabinoid binds to a receptor which signals the cell to take some action, such as reducing pain or inflammation. And once the endocannabinoids have done their job, enzymes are responsible for breaking them down and returning the body back to homeostasis. 
Cannabinoids can also help reduce inflammation and promote apoptosis, the process by which cells die naturally. Moreover, studies have shown that medical marijuana can help reduce tumor growth and prevent tumor cell spread. Cannabinoids can inhibit tumor growth by inducing cell death and reducing cell proliferation. Additionally, the cannabinoids can help sensitize cancer cells to other therapies such as radiation and chemotherapy. And while there's no known cure for brain tumors, combining medical marijuana with conventional treatments can help alleviate some of the symptoms associated with these treatments. Medical marijuana can help manage symptoms such as nausea and vomiting and chronic pain by interacting with that endocannabinoid system and reducing inflammation. And furthermore, medical marijuana can reduce tumor growth and prevent tumor cells spread by inducing cell death, reducing cell proliferation, and sensitizing cancer cells to other therapies. So as research into medical marijuana's effects continues, it's hoped that more effective treatments will be developed to improve the quality of life for patients with brain tumors. Now let's hear Dr. Sanjay Gupta from CNN talk about how he changed his mind about medical marijuana when researching its efficacy on refractory seizures in children. I started looking in other countries and some really good research out of places like Israel in particular. A guy named Roth Meshulam, who's 91 years old now. He was the first guy to ever isolate THC and then synthesize it. He's been doing this work forever. He may get the Nobel Prize before he dies for, for the, his work in this. They were talking about the use of cannabis for all sorts of ailments, including refractory seizures in kids. Hmm. And that one really, that really got to me for a couple reasons. One is that I think when you're trying to do studies on things like pain, it, it's it's hard. It's a subjective thing, right? And so you think is is how, how do you how do you really have conclusive proof that this is working the way that you think it is? Someone says their pain is better, and that's important. But how do you measure that? A little child who's having 300 seizures a week and is now not having seizures is a much more specific sort of metric. And it it seemed to work really well in in kids who did not respond to existing. Seizure drugs, hmm. which which was kind of amazing to me, and I think I told you when we've spoken before that that to me in some ways that wasn't just a a medical issue at that point, it was a moral issue because nothing worked for these kids, and they were thinking about even compounding veterinary medications for them, and these parents are like you know in their kitchen sinks stirring up you know cannabis trying to get the formulation right to turn it into an oil or a tincture they could put underneath the kid's tongue and. And it was working. And, you know, I did stories on these kids and they were emblematic of thousands of more kids. These weren't just anecdotal stories. And that's when I said, you know, there's something here.